and then um, we will fill out the form while we're all in person. All right, but again, welcome to debate. This is the bottle novice edition. So if you were in this classroom, that means that you are a novice, which is like the beginner section of this debate league. And it'll make more sense the more we go on. I believe everybody has at least had an introduction meeting with debate. So you guys should all be at least familiar with the structure and kind of a little bit about the topic. So again, we did attendance, they're in the chat. Um, we are also going to be doing speaking drills today. So in case you've never done a speaking drill, so this would be a nice introduction just so you guys can get a little practice with it. Um, after we do that, we'll be doing a quick activity and then we'll be going into the evidence packet and just kind of doing a deep dive. So last week with Ella, um, when we were talking about the evidence packet, we like read through the cards, make sure we understood each one. So we can, cause a lot of debate is really just understanding your evidence and really just knowing what you're talking about. So I think the more time we allocate, like really understanding this evidence, the better you guys will be when you hit that debate round. After that, we can do a little bit of practice debate prep because I want to make sure you guys get at least one practice debate in before the tournament in October, but not to worry, like it's not until October 16th. Um, it's not until October 16th, so we will have plenty of time to like at least get a practice round in before that. Cool. So now let's get on to the speaking drills. So the first speaking drill we're going to be doing is speed. And before I get into like which one we're going to be doing, I'll give a little like preface as to what speaking drills are. So speaking drills are just like speaking activities in which you're going to be reading off of your evidence or a book or literally just anything that you have in front of you to read off of. And we'll be doing different drills and I'll explain how each drill goes as we begin. But first I want to make sure you guys have something to read off of. So if you guys have the evidence packet, either a physical copy, I believe physical copies haven't been dropped off yet at your school site. So go to the, or have they? Is that the evidence packet? The, oh, okay. Y'all are ahead of the curve, Never mind. You guys got the evidence packet. Um, Ella, do you have a physical copy of the evidence packet yet? Not yet. Okay. Oh, you're also in middle school, so they probably dropped off the middle school. I'll make a note to get to like at your site for the high school. Um, high school. Okay, cool. Um, cool. So yeah, um, Ella, I would recommend reading off of your like virtual copy of the evidence, um, or you can just get a book, whatever you feel more comfortable with. For everybody at Emory, make sure you have the page ready to go. Again, when you are reading. Okay. Again, when you are reading, make sure you start at the tagline. So you're going to read the tagline, which is the bolded part at the top of your card. You're going to read the author's last name. And then you're going to read the underlined portion of your card and you're just going to read it like that. That's how you read a card. Is there any questions about how to read a card? All right, can I get a thumbs up? Perfect. All right, great. Okay, I like the thumbs up communication. That's going to be the primary one. Perfect. Okay, so our first speaking drill is going to be speed. And how this works is that you're just going to read as fast as you can. So you're gonna start, start at the top of your card, read the tagline, author's last name, and the underlined portions just as fast as you can. So you're gonna be speed reading. Any questions about that? Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so I can show you guys a timer. We will be doing this drill for two minutes. Um, let me pull a timer. Sorry, give me one second. Google timer. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Not five minutes. Five minutes is way too long for a speaking drill. We'll do two minutes. So for two minutes, you're going to read as fast as you can. Just keep reading. Do not stop. Like you can take breaths, but do not stop reading. You're going to be reading as fast as you can for two minutes. Wow. Any questions? Can I get a thumbs up if you're ready? Perfect. Ella, are you ready? Perfect. All right. Two minutes and make sure you're standing up. So if you are in the classroom, stand up because when you debate, you're physically standing. You will not be sitting. It's also easier just to get that air out of your system when you are standing. Perfect. All right, so two minutes, read as fast as you can, starting now. Yeah. Uh, 
That is it for this drill. Perfect. You guys sound great, by the way. Love to hear it. So that is it for the two minutes. We're now going to move on to the next drill, which was, if I can refer back to my PowerPoint because I don't have it memorized, um, it was taco. So how this works is that you're going to insert the word taco in between every single word. So if you're reading the sentence, the cat ran, you're going to say the taco cat taco ran taco. So you're just gonna keep reading down your evidence. So same order, tagline, author's last name, like evidence packet, but you're just gonna put the word taco in between each one. Yeah. All right. And I think Jaden, you just joined. Are you from Emory? Yeah. Yeah, I'm in the class right now. I'm in the class. I'm oh, you're in the class. Okay, perfect. Never mind. So you, you already got it. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Any questions before you begin? Okay. Two minutes on the clock, taco drill starting now. That is it for the drill. All right, great. So that is a taco drill. See, not too bad. Once you get used to it, you get into the, the taco rhythm. Um, 
So taco is done. Let's now move into our last drill for today, which is backwards. So you're not going to read the, the words themselves backwards, but merely the order they appear in the sentence backwards. So if you have a sentence, the cat ran, you're going to read ran cat the. So you're going to start at the bottom of your page and you're going to read it the order backwards, not the words. Is there any questions before we begin? All right, last drill of the day, two minutes on the clock, starting, make sure you're standing up. I can see y'all. Make sure you're, <laughs> this is our last drill. This is almost a whole speech. You guys got it. I believe y'all. Okay, two minutes starting now. Thank you guys all for participating. Let's do a little check in, a little quiz. How do we feel so far with those speaking drills? Were they hard? Were they easy? Any feedback so far or any thoughts? Taco was the hardest. Taco was the hardest? Okay. Yeah, definitely. I can see that. <laughs> so it's like once you get into like the rhythm of like actually like inserting that word it'll go like way smoother it's just getting into like a pattern when you read another reason why we do like drills like taco is because sometimes especially when we speed read we tend to read the order the words in our head faster than what's coming out of our mouth and then we skip words so the reason why we do taco is to make sure that we're reading every single word on that page and um so a lot of these different speaking drills like have multi-purposes on why we do it but also just build up our stamina, make sure as we're projecting our voice and we sound really good because in debate, you do get judged based on how well you speak as well as how well you can articulate and argue yourself. So the more we do these drills, the better our speaking performances will be and the more trophies we will eventually win. So it may be a little tedious now, but trust me, it will pay off when we get to the tournament. Cool. So now we're gonna do an activity called beat the clock. So. We are going to gather in two pairs. So make sure that each debater has a full copy of their evidence, which you guys do. Um, and then you guys will be switching evidence. So it's like pair A, pair B. Debater A is gonna grab a random piece of evidence from their cards and it has to be more than four lines. So it has to be like an actual piece of evidence and they're gonna start reading it. And then debater B is going to have to look through their packet and try to find which card they're reading off of before they finish it. So I think for this, since Ella, you are on virtual, can we have Jaden and Ella pair up? So you two will actually like be a partner. And then can everybody in Ms. Critchlow's classroom please split into pairs? Yeah. 
Is there an even number in your classroom? Uh, no, not even. I got three and two because and you two. took later. Okay, sorry. Okay, so actually, let's do this all together. Um, let's do this as a big like group. So how it's going to work is we will have one person read off the evidence in the Zoom, and then everybody else will just have to find it in their packet. Does that sound good? Cool. All right, can I have a volunteer to be the first person to start reading their evidence? Anybody? Ella, okay, we got Ella for the first volunteer. Don't worry, there'll be more volunteers for the next rounds. Hopefully everybody can maybe go once. We'll see. Okay, so again, here's a refresh on how it's gonna work. So Ella is gonna pick a random card from the evidence packet. Since we are just starting out, you can tell us whether it's an app card or a neg card, just to make it a little bit easier. And then you're just gonna start reading. So you'll read the tagline, author's last name, and then just start reading the evidence card. And once you guys know which card that Ella is reading, you're gonna hold it up so we can see it. So once you figure out which card she's reading, you hold it up and then we'll stop it. And then we'll, we'll you know, verify to make sure it's the right card. Any questions on how this works? All right, perfect. Ella, do you have a card ready? Yep. Okay, and is it an app card or net card? App. App, okay. So everybody in the classroom, it is an app card. So it's gonna be one of those. Everybody ready? Can I get a thumbs up? Sorry, I was looking at two cards. Okay, so is it, is it still an app card or is it a net card now? Uh, I can still read an app card. Okay, cool. So we're reading an app card. Again, when you know which card Ella is reading, hold it up and then Ella will stop reading and we'll verify that it's the right card. All right, whenever you're ready. Okay. Legal principles emerge, avoid disruption of ecosystem offenses, avoid the harm where alternatives are available, avoid critical areas altogether, mitigate and restore damage. Rights of nature need not be a separate regulatory system. It ensures decisions from agencies meet standards. And most resource development does not put species at risk, but for those that do, nature rights can be reinforcing them against pressure. Unless rights to a balanced ecology are mandated, a generation to come inherit a parched earth incapable of sustaining life. Okay, that was the end of the card. All right, it wasn't that long of a card, but did anybody kind of find that card? Yeah. Everybody got it? Any takers? Anybody want to guess which card that was? All right. Oh, are they coming? No. Okay. All right, Ella, which card was it? Which give us the page number. Uh, page number 37. All right, so everybody in the classroom, Ella read page 37. Um, can you give us the tagline again? Yeah. No, it's not. It's too late. Okay. I didn't hear what you guys said. I think they they thought it was negative. What was the question? Oh, it was it was it was an app card. Sorry. <laughs> That's our bad. Okay, yeah. but see, that was just a practice round. It was a practice round. Ignore it. <laughs> now we'll do we'll do another round. We'll do another round. Um, but thank you, Ella, so much for like participating. Can I get somebody in the classroom to be the reader? One volunteer. Does somebody volunteer? Perfect. Okay. I think 
I, I can't really see faces, but red shirt, <laughs> like everybody's a blur, but um, the person hey. with the red shirt, you raise your hand, you will be our reader. Hey. Can you tell us? I'm sorry? It's over there. It's over there. Over there. Yeah. Okay. Everybody has a Ooh, perfect. Okay. Great, great, great. So you, can you tell us whether or not it's an AF or a NED card you're going to be reading? It's an AF card. It's an AF card. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, Everybody ready? Huh? AC is AF. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Well, All right. You can start reading. Advanced. Oh, shoot. There are several reasons why efficiency gains in the real world are likely to be far less than the back to five literature suggests. First, optimistic claims tend to overlook the implications of ongoing depletion of non renewable resources. As most easy access to resources deposits are first produced later, later deposits tend to require increasing time, energy, and money to discover the extract. With people with respect to fossil fuels, this trend is reflected in the declining energy return on energy invested. Between 1995 and 2006, the global average EROI for oil and gas declined from estimated uh, 3 1 to 18 1. Fall East Fall 2014, the average ERO of US uh, production following 11 1 versus 2013. Further decline of ERO is expecting in coming decades, given the increasing relentless of global economy economy or non okay i think i saw someone's hand raised all right do you, would you like to tell us which card it was tell us give us the page number i'm 34 34 all right is that the right page i don't know i just closed it after <laughs> no <laughs> give me a second Uh, what page did you say it was? 34? 34 to a C. Yeah. Ooh, is that right? Okay. Yay. Yeah. Okay. Clap it up. Congratulations. You got the first card. Look at that. Perfect. So that's kind of how it's supposed to go once you start reading the card. Then if you if you find it, raise your hand, we call on it, we verify, you get a point. So now we have one point so far on the board. Anybody can anybody can catch up. Can I get another volunteer to be a reader? All right, perfect. I think that's Salvador. Perfect. Great. So you're gonna be our reader. So do you have a card ready? No. Okay, is it Afrenek? Wait, never mind. I don't know what else. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, oh, yeah, I got one. Neg. Yo. Okay, you have a card? Yeah. Okay, is it after Neg? Uh, neg. Neg. Okay, everybody go to the Neg section of your packet because that's where your card will be. All right, whenever you're ready. I, wait, do I read the tag and everything? Or just yes, everything? read the tag, the author's last name, and then start reading the card. Right. Uh, rivers rights won't do anything. They will have all the same problems as existing environmental law. Start about 21. Do not share the view that RON entails a shift of paradigm and law that's the capacity to save the environment from the challenges we face today. Ooh, okay, hold on. We, Ella oh. got it. Ella, what page number oh. is it? Page 52. 52, right. is that right? Yeah. Okay, right. <laughs> See, we did the deck last week, so Ella was on it. <laughs> so that's, we got one point for Emery, one point for Parkside. Right now it's Parkside versus Emery. <laughs> it's perfect. So let's do a tiebreaker round. The next one will be a tiebreaker. Can I get one, one last volunteer to be a reader? Oh, perfect. Okay. okay. So you're going to be the reader. Is it an AF card or a NED card? I don't know. I haven't picked one yet. Okay. <laughs> Let me know when you, got, when you get one. Okay. It's AF. You heard me? It's AF. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Everybody ready? I'm supposed to read the underline, right? Yes. So let's start with the tagline. So the bold, um, like, sentence at the very top. 
and then author's last the name, and then the evidence. Okay. Okay. Number one. The first part, and then this part, and then this part. Oh, okay. How about highlighting? Let's look at highlighting. We're going to turn that part, so I want to write that part. Okay. I'll just start. Yeah. Okay. Rights for nature are feasible. They require avoiding farm injuries, remedying fire damage. Book 17. From these rules, we will put of nature, life in order to avoid destruction of. Basically, some system function to avoid harm. All natural areas where the alternatives are available to avoid critical areas altogether to mitigate prospective damage fully in time and to restore damage already occurred. You found it. Oh, okay, okay. What page number is it? Yeah. Is that correct? Page. Yeah. All right, clap it up. Emory got this one, even though it's unfair, seven people versus one. But you know, we do, we got to do in debate. So thank you guys all for participating, the readers and the people who found cards. This activity is really just to get you familiarized with your evidence packet, because in round, they're going to be reading off random cards. And sometimes you might like space out when they're halfway through the card, you're like, oh wait, I didn't take notes on what they said. So you have to go in your packet and find which part they read. So this is just a good activity just to make sure you guys like build up those skills so you know where to find these cards in case you need to do that in round. All right, perfect. So that's beat the clock. So now we are going to do an evidence packet deep dive. So we did a little bit of this last week. This isn't the most fun part of debate, but nevertheless, it is crucial to, you know, making sure we understand what's going on in the packet and you guys can really like argue because you can't argue if you don't know what you're talking about. Do you have a question? I have family. Okay, so we're going to talk about the evidence packet. So how it's going to work is I'm going to share my screen with the virtual evidence packet and you guys are going to read along in person. We're going to read over the cards. We're going to highlight it. Well, not highlight it. We'll just read it over, summarize it and make sure we understand it. Okay, cool. Let me pull up the evidence packet and we will get started. All right, so evidence packet, you guys have the physical copy. I will be joining you guys for the virtual copy along with Ella. Just to make sure we have like a, like a common understanding of the packet. Does everybody understand the plan text? Okay, Ella said yes. Can I get a thumbs up from Critchell's classroom if you guys understand the plan text or what the app is arguing? Do you guys understand that portion? Can you guys hear me? Okay, cool. Does you, do you guys understand the affirm, the uh, plan text of the packet or do you guys want to go over that? Is that, can I get a thumbs up if you want to go over the AF? And can I get a thumbs down if you want to go over the NEG? So NEG, NEG, okay. Cool, cool, cool. I'm seeing an overwhelming thumbs down for NEG. So we will be doing that. Before we move on to the NEG though, just as a refresher, the affirmative plan is therefore we offer the following plan. The United States federal government should grant legal rights to rivers essentially placing legal protection onto rivers as if the river was a person. So they have like the right to like representation, all of these like good rights that like rivers originally don't have because they're an inanimate like force. Whereas now it'll be granted protection as if it was a person. That's what the app is saying. So the negative says something completely different. Um, so again, the negative is created of disadvantage and answers. So disadvantages are just consequences of the plan. So what bad thing will happen if we were to pass the affirmative plan, which is to grant legal protection to rivers? That's what disadvantages are. So if you ever see a disadvantage on the next side, it's saying like what bad thing will happen if we pass the plan. In addition to disadvantages, you will also find answers. And those answers are responses to what the affirmative brung up on their side. 
So as you can see, it has like advantage answers, solvency answers. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so like <laughs> just make those two. So you'll see solvency answers and advantage answers. It's basically responses to the affirmatives like advantage claims and responses to the affirmatives solvency claims. And again, solvency is just how the plan will fix the problem. So the negative, those answers are like, staff is saying that we have the solvency, we're gonna fix the problem through X, Y, Z. The neg is gonna answer that and be like, your solvency will not work and here's why. That's what the negative is comprised of. So that's, what, that's the answers. Lastly, on the negative side, you'll find extensions. Like an extension card. So extensions are just further like elaboration are going further into detail of what the previous like argument was. So extension, it just picks up on what you previously said in your speeches and goes deeper into it or provides more details or more argue, or more, um, yeah, just more elaboration. So if you have like the economy argument saying that like granting legal protection to rivers will hurt the economy, if you have an economy extension, it's going to further talk about how granting legal protection is going to hurt the economy. So it's extending it, it's elaborating more, it's providing more details on this argument. That's what extension cards are. Okay. Any questions on what solvency answers are about solvency answers, disadvantages, or extensions? Okay, cool. Um, we're going to start on the second half because we went over the first half last week. So we'll start with the second half and then you guys can read the first half like later on or we can break into breakout rooms and like go further into it like that. So let's see, do, Ella, do you remember which card we left off on last week? I think we just finished the answers, right? Yeah, we finished the answers. So the card to start reading is the first economy extension. First economy extension. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, cool. So we're going to be doing popcorn rating. You guys are very familiar with it, I'm pretty sure. One person is going to be called on, or like you can volunteer, to read a card. So kind of like we did at the activity, you're going to read the tagline, the under the author's last name date, and then you're going to read the underlined portions. After we do that, we will talk about the card to make sure we understand it, and then we'll move on to the next card. Because again, this isn't the most fun part of debate, but it is the most crucial, because you cannot debate if you do not understand what you're talking about. And in novice, most of the time, the round like boils down to who knows the evidence best because they're better to articulate and argue for it. So if you want to do well, you need to do a little bit of the grunt work in the beginning, and then we can have like fun, do all these spar debates and all those good things. But reading the packet is crucial. So can I have a volunteer to start with the first card? Ella, okay, perfect. And for everybody in the classroom following along, it is on page 57. So again, we're gonna be reading this. I will take questions to make sure we understand it. And then we'll move on to the next part. Stimulus funds and other government intervention ensured COVID didn't undermine the economy, but it's fragile enough that a new shock could. Lynch 21, did flood, no. US leaders did flood the economy with several trillion dollars resuming, uh, resuming growth. Still, the U.S. rebound has been anything but smooth. Labor market process has dis disappointed, and e I cannot read today. And <laughs> even reopening has led to a widespread shortages. Those supply chain headaches are going global, and an increasing number of countries are suffering supply disruptions, shifting to problems, and delivering delays forcing companies to raise prices to compensate. The Fed Reserve insists that May 5th, uh, May's 5% annual inflation reading, the highest since August 2008, represents a temporary fever. All right, perfect, thank you. So we read the card. Is there any questions off the bat on what this card means or what it's saying before we go into it? Okay, cool. So again, this is an extension card, which, meant, which means that a previous argument was made and this is a further elaborating on it. So the prior argument to this is the economy argument, which is saying that if we were to pass the plan, which is to grant legal protections to rivers, then the economy, which is stable right now, 
will then collapse, <laughs> but not like collapse, like, you know, it'll, it'll um, deteriorate. Oh. And once the economy gets a little shaky, then we will go into war because war is a good way to boost your economy. So that's what the argument, the argument is saying that if we pass the plan, it hurts our economy. When our economy is down, we go into war because of war like boosts our economy. So this card is extending it and it's saying that our, that our economy is good, but it's not that stable. So anything like a plan granting legal protections to rivers could shake that stability, which then hurts our economy. Any questions on that? Okay, so that is the economy extension card. So can I have another volunteer to read the next page? 58, economy extension app collapses the economy. And this is a link card. Is that a volunteer? Ooh, perfect. Yay, I think I see a volunteer. What page is that? All right, whenever you're ready, you can start reading. R58 is blank. <laughs> What'd you say? R58 is blank. Oh, it's blank in your packet? Yeah. Oh, sorry. 59, 59. My is bad. I'm sorry. The economy extension app collapses? Yes, that's, yes okay. that's the one. Okay. Okay. Um, Nature rights would cause massive parts to the economy. The nature rights movement wants to restore some prosperity. Nature rights demand. The nature rights demand. Eliminate the authority of a property owner to destroy or cause substantial harm to natural communities and ecosystems. This would essentially destroy rights of private property. Include a statement of law that all natural beings, natural communities, and ecosystems possess the inalienable right to exist, flourish, regenerate, and evolve. A right to life for nature would stop human enterprise and enterprise in return development in its tracks. The PP assumes that if someone even has even the slightest hypothetical chance of going wrong, it must not be done. Another way to stop human from engaging in enterprise is resource development. Find that it shall be unlawful for any person, government, agency, corporation, etc., to intentionally or recklessly violate the rights of natural beings, natural communities, or ecosystems. This comes close to a law of ecocide that would criminalize development. The proposed rights of nature, rights of nature ordinance would have enormous detrimental implications for all public and private land. Agriculture, medicine, backyard gardens, animal ownership, public land access, and trail use, property rights, it would create unimaginable social and legal nightmares all over. All right, perfect. Thank you. So we have another card. And again, this one is not only an extension, but a link. So if you guys remember back when we were talking about um, like warrants claim and like links, this is a link which shows like how does passing a plan, which is like granting legal protection to rivers, how does that connect to like economy collapse, right? So what is the link between these two things that we are bringing up in this round? So that's essentially what this card is saying. So you're saying um, it'll cause more harm to the economy because you know you won't have access to like property rights and people use it for like certain business purposes. So they would no longer have access to that. And then by doing that, our economy kind of suffers. So like that's the link. It was like we grant legal protections to rivers, then people won't have the same access they did to this natural resource, which then hurts businesses, which then hurts the economy. Next card, and this one's a short one. So if you don't want to read, I would recommend volunteering for this one. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Economy extension, app collapse the economy link. Lawsuits from the panel wreck small businesses and government budgets. McDonald 19. Opponents of the legal rights of the nature movement are individuals and small businesses who claim they will be susceptible to copious laws threatening their livelihood. Their livelihood. Owners of the farm surrounding Lake Erie 
are you mostly brought on behalf of the lake to stop agriculture runoffs to put the farms out of business? These small businesses contend agriculture runoff problems must be solved scientifically and with the help of those experienced in the best farming practices. This bill may subject businesses who abide by all current laws to extend straining lawsuits. Passage of the bill may cost the city thousands of legal fees and most likely drain city finances. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. So this is another link. So again, how does economy collapse connect to, you know, granting legal protection to rivers? This one is saying that it'll mostly impact farmers because, you know, once we protect rivers, then they can't do the same like farming practices that they originally had because it then like, you know, harms the river and the ecosystem and now that's protected. So they're saying that like with this new protection, farmers are being impacted. And then if they want to go against this, they have to file lawsuits, which then costs a lot of money, which then like they can't keep like contribute to the economy like they did before. And that then leads to economy collapse. Do you guys kind of see how it's like, it's showing the connection between economy collapse and how passing the plan would cause that. It's connecting the two. Great. So another one, economy extension, economic collapse, bad. And this is an impact part. Can I have a volunteer to read this one? Page Yes, 61. Uh, economy extension, economic collapse, bad. Economic collapse will cause global war. Connection 15. Both inhibit and drive conflict and negative trade expectations may generate tensions leading to trade wars among independent states that in turn increase the risk of military conflict. If leaders on either side of the Atlantic begin to seriously fear and anticipate their own nation's decline, then they may blame this on the external dependence uh, appeal to anti foreign sentiment. Contemplate, contemplate the use of force to gain respect for credibility, adopt protectionist policies, and ultimately refuse to be deterred by either nuclear arms or prospect of socioeconomic calamities such as dangerous shifts could happen abruptly. In East Asia, the greatest risk is not that a terrorist, that a territorial dispute leads to war under present uh, circumstances, but that changes in the world economy alter those circumstances in ways that render interstate peace more precarious. Um, this could have unforeseen consequences in the field of security, with nuclear deterrence remaining the only factor to protect the world from Armageddon and unreliably so. Deterrence could lose its uh, deterrence could lose its credibility. One of the two great powers might gamble, but the other yields in a cyber war or conventional limited war. All right, perfect. Thank you. So we finished, we read another like extension card. And again, this one's talking about impact. And it talks about how economic collapse can then lead into global war. The reason why it's saying this is because once the government, like the economy collapses, the government then can blame it on like external forces, things saying like we're too dependent on these countries and that's why our economy is bad. So then they then like adopt new policies to like build up their economy, which then looks bad on their like relations with other countries and then their tension could start to form and then it could lead to war so as you can see like in debate it's a lot of like kind of like domino effect that this one plan could then trigger all these different things to happen which can then lead to this huge impact of like economy collapse and war so as you see we start with the plan which is like grant legal protection to rivers it hurts our economy because like it hurts farmers, local businesses, because they can't use the rivers like they used to, which then hurts the economy because now they're not contributing the same amount that they did originally. And now that the economy is bad, the government is now going to either blame other countries or blame dependents on those countries and do more like internal kind of trade deals, which then can start tension between other countries, which then leads to war. Do you guys kind of see that like that layout on how you start this plan and then it leads to this? You guys kind of see how it kind of flows. Okay, cool. Again, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to like raise your hand and like walk up and like ask me or you can ask Ms. Critchlow as well. Um, yeah, just let us know. Cool. So next one is an answer to a moral obligation. So just as a preface as to what moral obligation is, because in case you didn't get to it on the affirmative side, Within debate, moral obligation is saying that we as human beings 
have a responsibility to do a certain thing, right? That's our moral obligation is that being a human, we have an innate responsibility to protect rivers or to protect nature, or protect wildlife, protect this planet, right? We have a moral obligation to do that. So this is an answer that the neg will then respond to that. So the app will be like, we have a moral obligation as human beings to protect nature, right? That's just what humans are supposed to do. Now this negative is going to answer this and this is what this card is gonna say. So can we have somebody read this card? Uh, sorry, how many did the last? Okay, go ahead. Uh, Jordan has to go. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you for volunteering. Um, page sixty-three is the one we're reading. Answer to okay. moral obligation. Preventing war and preserving existence comes before moral obligation. Michele, 17. Human beings are in, in themselves. The capacity for action is applied in obligation. Responsibility, mu responsibility must have the function of making possible, making possible more than a, determining the present. Every responsibility is, also, is always also the preservation of the future possibility. Human beings have been, what the heck is that saying? Uh, nature of nature is capable of determining the aim of action is to carry them out autonomously. Have reached the point at which self-destruction is possible. This imposes the duty to not destroy what is it. Human power requires the union of will and ethics in politics are interwoven in a situation where survival is great. Responsible policy turns towards the future with the consciousness that it is that it must guarantee the very possibility of responsible action in the existence of our future generations, the, the right to life of the world. All right, thank you. Okay, perfect. So this is a again answer to the moral obligation so the app is saying we need to protect rivers because that's what we're supposed to do as humans we're supposed to protect the planet wildlife all those good things now the neg is giving kind of an alternative proposal right so the app is saying we have a moral obligation to protect nature the neg is saying no we have a, we have a moral obligation to prevent war and preserve human existence right so it's like, which one should we prioritize? Should we prioritize nature or should we prioritize the continuation of the human race, right? That's kind of what the neg is saying. So it's giving kind of an alternative proposal to what the app is saying. Now it's your job as the neg to prove that this is a bigger obligation or this is more important than protecting nature, right? So the app is gonna say, protecting nature is the first thing we should prioritize this is all that matters. You are going to say, no, protecting nature comes second to preserving human life, and here's why. So that's kind of what your role of the neg is going to be within this round, is to, if, if the app, like, uses the moral obligation argument. Now, sometimes, especially in novice, they're not really going to talk about the moral obligation, um, or, like, they might skip it, they might not talk about it. So that's really when you should hit home and be like, we shouldn't care about rivers as much as we should care about preserving human life. And here's why. Like, this should be the priority in the round. And you really make it clear to the judge that you should vote for the negative because the negative preserve is, preserves human life. And that's more important than protecting rivers. Any questions on that? OK. Cool. So now we're doing extension. This is advantage answers and species are resilient. Can I get a reader? Perfect. Look, we got another reader. <laughs> so exciting. Thank you guys for volunteering. All right, whenever you're ready. Uh, species are resilient. 
Their Riva 12 ecologists and conservationists have grossly uh, overstated their fragility of nature. Uh, the data simply do not support the idea of fragile nature at risk of collapse. Ecologists now know that the difference of one species does not necessarily lead to the extinction of any other. The demise of formerly abundant species can be inconstitutional to every two ecosystem function, the chestnut, uh, passenger pigeon, when extinct with no measurable death. Scientific nature literature identified 240 studies of ecosystems following major differences. Species are well as ecosystem function recovery. Uh, nature is so resilient that it can come rapidly from even the most powerful human disturbances. Perfect. Thank you. So, again, this is an answer to the affirmative's advantage statement. So, as a like back up into what the app is saying, the app is saying that we should protect rivers because they are crucial to our ecosystem and that if we don't protect rivers, our ecosystem will collapse, all of our species will die out and we're just like out of luck, right? That's what the app is saying. Now the NEG is saying that that's actually not true, that species are resilient and just because we're like using these rivers resources doesn't necessarily that that will lead to ecosystem collapse. So they're just saying like the river will be fine, right? Like they don't need legal protection, nature's resilient just because we're using this river doesn't mean that we're gonna cause a lot of harm to this ecosystem. So that's kind of like, you can see the clashing points, right? So the app is saying, no, we need to protect rivers because they're very crucial to our ecosystem. Without them, our ecosystem would collapse. The NEG is answering that and saying, actually, rivers aren't that important, right? Like there's a bunch of different nature systems and ecosystems and just by using this river doesn't mean it'll cause collapse. So that is what the app's response is to the I mean, that's what the next response is to the app's initial claim. Any questions? Do you guys see how it's kind of like the push and pull that app and neg have? Okay, cool. I'm getting some nods. Great, great, great. Um, extension, another advantage answer. Can I get a volunteer to read? Technology advanced means aren't as resilient on environmental or at risk from environmental decline. Page. 65. We're almost there. Ella, perfect. Okay, so whatever you're ready. Technology advance means aren't we aren't as re reliant on the environment or at risk from environmental decline. I, how do you say that name? We'll work on that. You can skip. <laughs> we'll work on the, the author's pronunciations. Okay. John 15. Let's go with that. Human technologies have made humans less resilient upon the many ecosystems that once provided their only set attendance even as those same ecosystems have only been left deeply damaged. There's little evidence that human population and economic expansion will outstrip the capacity to grow food or procure critical resources. Human use of many other resources is similarly peaking. The amount of water needed for the average diet has declined by nearly 25% in, in the past half century. Resource sufficient technologies mean that the total human impact on the environment can peak and decline this century. Humans have the opportunity to rewild and regreen the earth. Okay, perfect. So essentially, this card is saying that the earth has enough resources to provide for humans without destroying it, in addition to the advantages advances within technology means that we are less reliant on nature as we once were. So the impact that we have will not be that great if we were to continue using these rivers because we have technological advances. There's enough resources on this planet to sustain the population and the population isn't gonna increase anytime soon, especially with COVID with population decline. So they're saying that it'll be fine. Like we don't need to worry about rivers. We have advances so we're not as reliant on this. We don't need them as much as we need to, so there's no need to pass this plan. 
Okay, right. we're almost there. And then once we do this, we can do a little bit of spar debates. So let's just keep it going. We have a few more cards and then we can, you know, have a little fun and debate. So can I get another volunteer? This is another short one. So if you don't like reading, this is the card to volunteer on. Any volunteers? It's a very short card. Any volunteers at all? It's a very short card. Who do you have a volunteer? Ray. No, Ray. She read twice. No, All right, perfect. Thank you. Um, page 66. Extension. Rights of nature is expanding now, but it can't save the planet. Recently, 19. Rights of nature and expansion around the globe, voices are rising to promote it. Even in the European Union, where the legal protection of the environment is quite sophisticated. Rights of nature, sorry, of nature are not a legal revolution and will not save the world. It is rather a legal trend, not so much opposed to environmental law, which is not fundamentally changing the nature of legal issues concerning legal norms, effectiveness by those who want to save the planet by using law. It will take more recognition, recognizing rights of nature all around the globe. Perfect, thank you. So this card is basically saying that the plan is a shiny little Band-Aid that will not actually heal the wound, right? It's saying that it's not really doing much. Like it's a trend, it's not in the long run, it's not gonna hold up and it's not gonna actually save our planet. So the idea of the AF is saying that protecting rivers is crucial and that we need this plan to protect the rivers. The NEG is saying that it will not actually protect the rivers. It's really just a superficial like statement that people say to like act like they're saving the world, but they're really not. So it's really just saying that it's like a frivolous thing to do. Like it's not really gonna change anything. So this, this card really downplays the significance that the app is trying to portray that the plan is, right? They're like, it's not significant as you think. We already have environmental laws in place. So it's not really gonna, you know, impact or change anything. Okay, just, let's see, one, two, three, four. Oh, we really have like three more cards. We're almost there. This is the most tedious, I'm telling you, this is the most tedious part of debate. The rest, like it's only up from here. So let's finish off strong. Can I get another volunteer? Keep on Any volunteer? No, shut up! <laughs> We're here. Don't worry, we're here. Okay, now you're good. You know what? I'm gonna start charging you. Yeah, <laughs> All right, <laughs> Ella. <laughs> we got a volunteer. Woo! So Ella is going to read the card. You can get following along. It is on page 66. Everybody ready? Can you get a thumbs up from memory? All right, we're gonna Ella volunteer to read. Can I get a thumbs up from Emory if you guys are ready? Can you guys hear me? Okay. okay. All right, so we have Ella is gonna volunteer for this card. Um, can I get a thumbs up if you guys are ready? Ready? All right, perfect. Page 67. All right, go, Ella. The app is not different enough from the current environmental law to solve. Wait. Oh, yeah. Little yeah. Ron will not do away with the main for clean up modern environmental law, lack of proper enforcement. Ron is not, wait. I'm just reading the highlight of parts. Uh, lack of an environmental, I'm just gonna start over. Ron will not do away with the main shortcoming of modern environmental law, lack 
uh, proper enforcement. It is opined that merely acknowledging nature's rights into legislation will in itself not lead to a better protection of the EU's endangered nature if not com com complemented with a clear commitment for more strict environment. Ron is not a legal revolution. Their first is us assumption underlining the Ron's theory is that environmental law is too anthro <laughs> anthropocentric. That's the word. Anthropocentric to take in account the intrinsic value of nature, whereas Ron would be more suitable to carry out the task of reasserting this interstitic value. This is a po why so many weird words? Um, point, on, point of departure. However, this to haunt me while attractive from a philosophical point of view renders an objective legal critique of Ron challenging at best. Ron supporters attach too much weight the above depicted uh, distinction. Modern environmental law is less anthropocentric <laughs> that than it used to be. Modern environmental law protects intrinsic value, which led to recognition of pure ecological harm in several legal instruments. And the burden of proof is no longer an insurmountable hurdle in legal cases. Perfect, thank you. This is a hard card. Like, this is, <laughs> they put a lot of big cards in this one. Even I was like sweating a bit. But like, I definitely feel it. Also, this is a good like plug for the evidence packet, which is saying that like, we're always willing to take feedback on these packets because they are like an ever evolving kind of like form. So the first packets that we send out, this is like the first wave. If there are any edits that you would like to be seen within this packet, so you think like this argument isn't that strong or you don't like like the highlight on this cards or like the language is a little bit awkwardly worded, please let us know because we will edit and update these packets accordingly. So again, we're open to any feedback that you guys have in this packet. So if you, as you guys are reading it and you guys are like, hmm, I don't really like this card or like this argument doesn't make sense. Please take a note and send it to us because we are updating this as yeah. we go. Because we, we write the packets. So you guys are good. So again, just to like debrief on what this card is saying, it's saying that like we have current environmental laws in place that are doing what the plan is doing, if not better, right? So we don't really need the affirmative plan because it's not really gonna solve anything. It's not gonna do anything. It's just this frivolous action just to say like, hey, we're protecting rivers, but there's a lack of enforcement on environmental laws currently. So they're like, we might as well just stick with what we currently got going. And again, this goes into the idea that the purpose of the neg is to show that the AF is going to make the status quo worse, right? So the app is saying that they prefer the status quo, so what is currently going on in the world over what the world will look like if the plan was passed. So that's where your, your goal is of NEG. The NEG isn't to solve the problem. The NEG isn't to propose a better solution. The goal of the NEG is just to say that the world that we currently live in is better than a world when the plan is passed. Okay? Cool, so we have two more cards left. Who would like to read the second to last one? Wait, we read this one. Wait, let me see, let me see, sorry. The solvency answer. Conflicting laws and under enforcement making rights of nature fail. Okay, to volunteer for 68. The second to last card, we're almost there. The fact that we, ooh, perfect. <laughs> Uh, uh, conflicted, conflicting laws and under reinforcement make right of nature fail. But the tale of 19. 
effectiveness or lack thereof after all. Or, whereas in Romanville, it doesn't easy to present the positive that modern environmental law is falling to reach its objective. The track record of r one is not much better. Empirical studies regarding the effectiveness of r one countries such as Ecuador and Bolivia uh, clearly reveal the, the myriad of limitations to be faced with this respect. Ecuador is, Ecuador's r one amendments are more likely to have an impact if Ecuador implements if Ecuador implements structural and procedural changes, 76, uh, point 76. This should come as no surprise simply granting legal uh, personhood to nature will not make a big difference when it is not supplemented with uh, structural changes. For one, even when um, even when everybody can act as if the guardian when nature's right, uh, rights are encroached upon, nature will still nature will still disappear if no one is effectively willing to take, ma uh, take manifest violations before court. Even when nature's rights are explicitly protected in the Constitution, other provisions in the same con uh, Constitution might still prioritize economic development and lead to ongoing environmental destruction. In fact, most of it is linked to what uh, Herbert Hart named secondary norms point seventy seven. Even if all countries would immediately decide to implement RON into the legislation, there is just no guarantee that the environmental decline would be cured. I think for RON approach might inflict uh, additional harm the environment. To the environment, if not properly enforced. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So, again, this is an answer to the affirmative solvency. So, again, solvency is just how the affirmative plan is going to solve the problem, right? So, the next response to saying that granting legal protection to rivers is going to solve the problem, they're essentially saying that because there's no way to enforce this or there's no system put in place to actually like give these protections to the river, then you cannot guarantee that it's going to fix the problem and you can't guarantee the protection of these rivers. So your plan's going to fail. Like it's not going to do anything. It's just not going to work. So we might as well just keep the current laws we have because you know it's going to stay the same. So again that goes into playing of the status quo. We're just saying that like we might as well leave what we have going right now alone because just adding this on is first of all, it's not going to do anything. And two, it's going to trigger all these disadvantages like economic collapse, war and all that. So it's going to make everything that's going on worse. So we should just keep the status quo. We should keep what's going on right now. Perfect. This is the last card of the negative. So can I have a volunteer to finish this off? Right. Yes, it's it's page I can't 70, 70. Uh, US action on environment doesn't cause global action. Nick Gano 19. Support for the legal rights of nature movement gave an impressive foothold of foreign countries and continues to make small strides in the United States as well. While moments uh while moment in the United States has progressed slowly. It has enjoyed markedly more success internationally. Despite the progress of both Ecuador and 125, New Zealand functioning as a model of countries around the world who seek and accomplish the same goal of headway to the United States has failed to rise above the grassroots level and remain an open ended question. Okay, so this is a response to a spillover argument. So a spillover argument is saying that by doing this plan, other either organizations, countries, societies are going to follow along because it looks like a good idea, right? So this is saying that the app is saying that the affirmative by passing, passing the river plan, other states, other countries are going to look at it and be like, that's a good idea and follow suit. And then we all save the world because everybody's like protecting rivers. This is saying that's not necessarily the case because the United States isn't really at the global forefront of like environmental like action. So there are other models that currently exist that are doing better than the United States. So that the United States passing plan doesn't necessarily mean that's gonna inspire other places to do the same. So it's not really gonna save the planet after all. Or maybe it is, that's up for debate. And that's why this is a topic that we are talking about. So is there any questions so far on the negative side of the packet? Okay, cool, cool, cool. 
So th this is what I would recommend you guys doing also on your own time, just like reading through the packet, making sure you understand it. Because again, this is the most important part of debate is that you guys understand what you're talking about in round. Because if you understand your evidence, then when somebody's trying to like twist your words or trying to like pivot your argument to say, make it say what they wanted to say to like get that valid to win the round, you're like, no, I read my card. I know what it's saying. You, you're misinterpreting it. Here's what it's saying. So read it, on, read it, make sure you understand it so you can come to practice and we can really like have a good debate round. So let's go back to what we have for today. So what we're gonna do is we're going to try to do, we'll try to schedule practice debates. So we'll do a Q and A slash closing statement portion. So if you guys have any questions about debate, what we talked about the negative side, speaking drills, literally anything, please let me know now and I will like help answer any questions you guys have. Even if you're just like, what does the next tournament look like? I can help you guys with that. Oh, and like, it, I would just fill it out again. Yeah. So fill it out. If you fill it out one time with like incorrect information, fill it out again. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, Ella? Are we doing a practice debate next, um, next time? I think next week we'll prep for the practice debate and we'll be doing it the week after next week. So next week we'll do some cross x some flowing just to make sure like we really hone in those skills and so we you know we did an f neg now we gotta do cross x and flowing and then once we do that we can do prep and then we'll do practice the week after.